classes on fundamentals of electrical engineering. We were on control systems and we had finished both an based response as well as frequency response. Now we move on to time based response and the modeling using a signal flow graphs and a block diagram. Now we move on to frequency response. Uh, in frequency response, we'll be covering, um, of course, the general details. Then we'll move on to the body plot, the request uh, as also polar plots, and finally the gain and phase march. So now let's look at some of the problems in frequency response first. Okay. Uh, yeah, in frequency response, the first problem that I've put in here uh, came recently. It was in the uh, the last gate examination. Uh, yeah, so we see that we see um, a block of GS uh, being given an input RP as defined as one plus. So there's a DC component plus zero point one sine ten t, and the output is y t. And uh, what is given is an LTA system is shown in the figure where GS is equal to hundred. Omega n square divided by s square plus 0.1 s, so that is 2 eta omega n plus 100. Okay, so that's again omega n square. Uh, so, yeah, so now steady state output of the system to the input RP is given as y t is equal to a. So, there's a DC component. Okay, of course, it's a linear time invariant system. That's the reason why the, uh, the, the, the shape of the input is preserved in the output. So, but not the magnitude, etc. Magnitude will depend upon how you, uh, how you, uh, uh, what the system does to the input to create an or generate an output. Okay, so we have a plus b sine ten t plus theta. So one important uh, in, uh, in, uh, point to note happens to be that there aren't any harmonics. So the omega value, that is the omega value in the input, that is 10, is preserved in the output as well. However, there might be a phase difference and that is described by theta. Okay, so but we are required to find out only A and B. We can always find out theta as well, so long as you know what the system does. And the system as we see it is uh, the same as equal to 100 divided by S square plus 0.1 S plus 100. Okay. Since it's a linear time invariant system, you can uh, you can split the input into the DC as also the AC components. So when the DC is given, S is equal to zero. Okay, so we see that uh, the input uh, the DC component one will be multiplied by hundred by hundred or one. So A is equal to one, and all okay, um, and A and the answers A and B give us A equal to one. So now we just need to check what's the value of B, whether it is ten or hundred. Okay, so that we move on to the uh, sinusoid input which has a magnitude is given by 0.1 and of course the frequency is the same. So now we substitute for um, s as equal to j omega where omega is equal to 10. Okay so now we are having s square replaced by uh, j 10 square or minus 100. So 100 and 100 on the denominator uh, get cancelled and in the denominator you are having 0 0.1 into j 10 instead of s or in other words it's going to be uh, j1 okay so 100 by 1 is going to be the magnitude or you are going to have um, you, you are going to have a multiply duplication to the input for magnitude by 100 by j so it's going to be uh, yeah it's going to be 10 okay so b is equal to 10 as simple as that okay this is uh, the the general vein of the problems in the um, in, in 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 the subsequent uh, qu questions as well. So let's go to the second question. In the system shown in figure, the input xt is equal to sin t. Okay, so what is omega? Omega is equal to 1 in the steady state. The response yt will be. Okay, so what's the system? System is given by s by s plus 1. Okay, and the input is only sinusoid. So you can definitely replace um, uh, the magnitude and the angle version of the uh, of the system that acts on the input as equal to uh, s is equal to j1 in both in the numerator and the denominator. So what do we have there? We have uh, j1 uh, in the numerator and you are going to have j1 plus 1. Okay, so we have the magnitude is equal to 1 by 1 square plus 1 square, square root of that or 1 by root 2 and the angle is going to be 90 degrees that is j on the numerator divided by uh, the, uh, minus because it's from the denominator what comes out is it's j1 plus 1 so angle is 45 degrees 
and uh, so when it goes to numerator, it becomes minus 45. So uh, 90 minus 45 is 45 degrees. And what is asked is the response y t will be. Okay, well, obviously the magnitude is going to be 1 by rho 2 and the angle is going to be uh, a positive angle of 45 degrees. So b is the correct option. Okay. Let's go to the third problem. The closed loop transfer function of a control system is given by Cs by Rs is equal to 1 by S plus 1. Okay, or 1 by 1 plus S. Okay, this is the, it's almost the same as the earlier problem except for the fact that there is no s on the numerator so the so the angle of angle is different because angle this the s when it's replaced by j omega you are having a 90 degrees there so that's not present there okay the magnitude does not change because uh, s has a magnitude equal to even if you replace it by uh, j omega of course it has a it has a magnitude equal to omega okay? Yeah, but the, the input is the same for, for the input RT is equal to sin T, so omega is equal to 1. So the magnitude does not change, but the angle changes. Okay. The steady state value CT is equal to, so what do we have there? 1 divided by, yeah, let's, uh, omega VC is equal to still 1, so 1 by 1 plus J1. Okay, so the magnitude is going to be 1 by root 2. Okay, and the angle version will be 0 minus 45 degrees. Okay, so we are seeing that uh, in this case, the the option that is 1 by root 2 sine 1 minus pi by 4 is going to be sine t minus pi by 4. There's a mistake that sine, yeah, so I'll correct it. So, uh, sine t minus pi by 4 is going to be the solution to the uh, solution to the problem and the output as well. Let's go to the fourth problem. All problems are easy in this session. <coughs> A system with zero initial conditions has the closed loop transfer function T s is equal to s square plus 4 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 4. The system output is zero at the frequency. So we have here j omega wherever we wherever we solve for s square plus something okay plus plus let's say a in this case it is 4. So the frequency in other cases, uh, in other cases, it's going to be uh, s is equal to the j omega plus one is equal, is going to give you the frequency and j omega plus four. Okay? So we have yes, so now system output is zero at the frequency. Okay, obviously, uh, uh, for a for a for a value uh, to be equal to for for, a, for an input to be multiplied by a filter or to be cascaded with the filter. Uh, to, uh, to get no output, you must have a 0 on the numerator and that's possible only when s square plus 4 is equal to 0 or in other words, s is equal to uh, by plus or minus j2. Okay, So we see that j2 is talking about the uh, frequency in the radians per second as equal to 2. Okay? So in this case, the answer is going to be 2 radians. Okay? A similar problem is the fifth one, where the system with transfer function gs is equal to s square plus 9. Okay, so whenever we are talking about frequency, etc., s square plus 9, s plus 2, etc., is going to give you, uh, no, okay, so we'll go further here, s plus 2, and then you are having on the denominator s plus 1 and s plus 3 and s plus 4. Okay. It's excited by sin omega t. Okay, of course, now we are, we are also told about an input. So obviously, now we are having in omega um, as the frequency and the steady state output of the system is zero. Of course, now we see that when we replace only, uh, only uh, when we replace uh, S by J3 only, we are going to get a, um, a numerator equal to zero because J3 square will be minus nine. So plus nine minus nine is equal to zero. So in this context, we are testing, we are, we are also looking at the Input because the input can uh, input is uh, telling us that the frequency is going to be omega. Okay, so in that context, we realize that only when the frequency is equal to three radians per second, we are going to have an output equal to zero. And so C happens to be the correct answer. I suppose the subtle difference between uh, differences between problem four and five is clear to you. In the earlier case, in both cases, we realize that the numerator is what is going to put the output as equal to zero. Uh, but when you are having a sinusoid input, then we look at only uh, what may be called as the, um, yeah, we uh, look at um, j omega and its square becoming equal to minus omega square okay, and setting the numerator as equal to zero. <coughs> yeah, now let's go to six problem. And this is the last slide. The transfer function of the system is given by VOS by VIS is equal to 1 minus S by 1 plus S. So what does it tell us? It tells us that there is a uh, that, 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 that this is a sort of a 
uh, controller, we are having a numerator and the denominator of equal values. It's the same as equal to square root of 1 plus omega square uh, uh, divided by 1 plus omega square or magnitude is equal to 2. But at the same time, uh, the, um, the numerator is giving a phase angle which is different from the denominator by virtue of uh, replacing uh, 1 minus um, s by g omega, you get 1 minus g omega by 1 plus g omega. Okay, so let the output of the system be V of t is equal to Vm sin omega t plus 5. The input Vit is equal to Vm sin omega t. So there's a phase difference as we saw earlier created by uh, the uh, created by the um, uh, transfer function 1 minus s by 1 plus s. Okay. And the minimum and maximum value of phi. Okay, so the min, the min, so the uh, are respectively. So, what is the minimum value that is possible? It should be as negative as is possible. So, numerator can be equal to uh, minus pi. Okay, I suppose that's clear. Why? Because uh, because we are having a we are having a, a minus j omega by one there. So, the the maximum value that you can get um, uh, in that context is going to be uh, minus pi by two. And then from the numerator, again, from the denominator, again, you can get by minus uh, pi by 2. So that becomes minus pi by 2 plus minus pi by 2. You are having minus pi. Okay. So that's the min most minimum possible value. Okay. At the same time, you can, the, the maximum value is going to be because there's going to be a, uh, there, there is going to be a negative value uh, angle because of the numerator. So the best thing that, that can happen is that they both cancel and you get what is called a zero there. Okay. So we can, we have, uh, if, if um, the, the negative value is, uh, angle is zero and the denominator is also zero. So we can get a maximum value equal to zero. So that's, the, that's the major concern that we have to see. We have to see that you have to have a map okay, so it's not minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 because minus pi is the most minimum okay so uh, in this case we choose um uh, we see to it that omega is equal to yes you get what is called as um, uh, uh, the numerator gives you uh, minus pi by 2 the denominator also gives you in that case denominator is also giving you pi by 2 so together you'll get what is called as minus pi as the most minimum value okay on the other hand you see to it that the negation and Okay, so you don't get any, uh, there's a negative value here on the numerator and then if you get a negative value again, it's again going, it's not going to give you the maximum value. So the only possibility for getting a maximum value is when both the negative, both the numerator and the denominator give you zero values. Okay, so you can substitute and see um, different values for omega there. Okay. Let's go to the last problem, a real uh, a stable linear a time invariant system with single pole at P as a transfer function okay so the single pole is shown in the transfer function as being s square plus 100 divided by s minus p with a dc gain of 5 earlier it's a dc gain was explained as when s is equal to 0 okay the smallest positive frequency in radians per second at unity gain is close to okay so we are seeing that dc gain when at, at, at the c s is equal to 0 gives you h 0 is equal to 100 divided by minus p which is equal to 5 okay so uh, so far uh, p can be seen as equal to minus 20 okay so now we are uh, so now we can replace p by minus 20 so now hs is equal to s square plus 100 divided by s plus 20 okay and for unity gain we realize that the magnitudes should be the the magnitude should be equal to one the magnitude of hs which is the same as equal to uh, yeah, um, um, uh, 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 should be say the same as equal to 100 plus no, yeah, so you, uh, the, you, you have the magnitude as equal to 100 um, uh, um, minus omega square on the numerator side and of course it's, it's, it's square root and, uh, and, and uh, its square root should be the same as equal to the magnitude of g omega plus 20 okay, when uh, s is replaced by zero, okay. so so uh, so now that's the same as equal to square root of omega square plus 400 okay i suppose uh, you know, uh, this is clear in the sense that the magnitude of numerator becomes the becomes a um, becomes a real value that's the reason why you don't take the square root there so it's it's minus omega square plus 100 divided by square root of omega square plus 400 is equal to 1 or minus omega square plus 100 is equal to square root of omega square plus 400 okay so you can you can solve it but i would suggest that you just simply substitute the different values okay so it's easier to do that because rough estimates can be put in there so if you choose a 
well, thankfully happens to be the as it is you can uh, you can suggest you can see that 100 minus omega square is positive okay so, and that's uh, it, uh, that's what you want because that, that, that it's positive so long as omega is um, is um, at the most equal to 10 okay so so now um, uh, option a seems to be a better choice that's why you you put it there so now if 8.8 uh, 4 is almost equal to 9, you'll see that that's equal to 9, 9, 81. So let's say 80 because 8.84. So now we on the new on the left hand side you are having around near around 10 B. Okay. And that is uh, and so if the square root of 400 and something is equal to um, is near around equal to 20, then that's going to be the solution. Obviously, it's true. Why? Right? Because uh, we are, we are having, if uh, omega is near around 9, then you're going to have 481 or so. And the, the, uh, I suppose we know the square roots until up to a particular value. So, you can see that they almost match. Okay. So, there are two ways of finding out. One is, of course, um, taking the root, uh, taking the uh, solving the whole equation, but much better than that is for substitution. And the first uh, suggestion that you get for substitution happens to be that omega cannot be larger than uh, larger than um, ten, or else the new uh, the the square uh, the root value will be j, and so you can't equate a real and an imaginary quantity. Okay, because um, yeah, so so that's. Uh, it will have to be a, a, a j value on the right hand side. So we see that uh, 8.84, even without so even without substitution, you can say that 8.84 is going to be the correct value. So in this session, we were looking at different aspects of uh, frequency, uh, especially when a sinusoid is given to a, <coughs> to a system. The system is under focus here. It has a mag it, it it works on the input. Such that a magnification is given to it by a by by the uh, total magnitude of a GS. It also brings it about a phase difference again given by the angle of GS. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two happens to be that uh, you can uh, you, you you can uh, see that you. Point number two happens to be that if the if the transfer function can work on the um, on the input and create a zero output by virtue of uh, the frequency being a, a particular value, or in other words, it can work as a filter. Okay, so that that's another point that we saw. Third happens to be that uh, we can have uh, we can uh, using a sort of a controller. Uh, given by 1 minus or um, s divided by 1 plus s though the magnitude does not change the phase angle can vary from uh, from a large value that is minus pi up to as much as zero okay so that is um, another uh, and that's exactly why we have controllers of the of this kind okay so finally we also saw that when we are having a, uh, a dck s has to be set as equal to zero to obtain any value that is not given and when uh, the magnitude is equal to 1 then you, have, you can say that the magnitude is equal to 1. Okay? So any time that you have j omega square then you are going to get a real value. Okay? So real value needs to be equated to a real value and that's what we have done in the last problem. I suppose this session is very clear and easy to you. You will done all master.